Okay. I just want to make a couple of quick comments about the fact that the world that we're living in today is increasingly marked by high levels of ambiguity and uncertainty. Very few people today think, you know what, I'm going to be involved with the same job that I have now in five or six years. I can't even be sure that my industry will still look the same in five or six years. That's the reality. All you've got to do is look at what's happened to bookstores, what's happening to New York Times. Uh, that's the world, and it's changing quickly. And even if you're in the world of technology, new technology is evolving so quickly that you can no longer be sure that what I'm doing today is going to be applicable in terms of what I need to prepare myself for for the future. What are the implications of that for how we use our experience? Uh, how do we deal? Experiential learning is a big part of adult education theory. Under conditions of rapid change, experience is a double-edged sword. It's still valuable, but you know what? It can also lead us in the wrong direction. So here's a couple very quick thoughts. Number one is, how are we really using our experience? We're drawing on analogies. Every time you hear somebody say, this is just like, what are they doing? They're drawing on an analogy. What should be the red flag? Does that analogy hold? How might that analogy change? Because there's different things happening in the environment. There's a literature that's growing that says, you know what, analog reasoning is an important way of thinking as one draws on one's experience. What are some of the key characteristics of that? A, identify explicitly what the analogy is. What, or what's the example that you're using? Two, focus on really what are the details that made it successful at that particular time. Three, then map how is the new situation potentially different in certain ways than was true of that situation. Make the comparison, and even more importantly, ask what are some of the potential trends that could be changing the new situation, even as you're taking action in it. In short, do what's called mapping around the analogy. So really paying attention, and not just making surface kinds of similarities. Another key tool is to really think in terms of what could be some of the scenarios that emerge then as you're looking at the new situation. Once you decide, okay, here's how this situation is similar and different from the example I'm drawing on. Here's the action I'm going to take. Okay, given certain constraints that I have, you can call them rules of the game, what are some key uncertainties that may happen? If one of those uncertainties happen, what might be some of the different ways things would play out? In other words, what might be some of the different scenarios? Given those different scenarios, what options do they suggest for me that I should be aware of? What's the advantage of doing that? First of all, it may lead me to think about some new choices, some new actions, some way of really modifying my action. Finally, what it can do is it really allows me to vicariously learn from the future. Because if all of a sudden one of those uncertainties plays out in a different way, I'm more likely to really recognize it and be ready for it and be able to adjust action in real time. Or to borrow a term from a very well-known medium person in our academic field, Don Shun, engage in effective reflection in action because I have already reflected on future actions. Those, I think, are increasingly critical skill sets and increasingly one of the challenges facing the field of adult education is how to prepare people to be 